Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Payam, and this is my joint work with uh, Bistra and Konstantin. The title is Lexis, an optimization framework for discovering the hierarchical structure of sequential data. Uh, here are my colleagues. Bistra is an assistant professor in School of Computational Science and Engineering, and Konstantin is a professor at the School of Computer Science. So I go through some motivation, uh, then go through the details of uh, our work, uh, the technical details, and uh, then talk about the applications. So um, a lot of natural and uh, artificial systems, uh, such as those to do with technological and biological systems, uh, rep uh, present a certain type of a structure. Uh, there are basically two characteristics that we are interested in, uh, modularity and hierarchy. So in a modular system, uh, basically different parts of the system have a modular formation and they have different functions. Uh, and in a hierarchically modular system, uh, simpler parts, simpler modules are reused uh, uh, to form basically the, comp the more complex uh, modules. Uh, so this happens in a number of systems. For example, in software systems, uh, like simpler classes are different modules that they have separate functionality and they basically form uh, more complex uh, classes. So now, now what is interesting to us is that uh, in a number of such systems, the data that is involved uh, has a sequential form or a string representation. And this is our uh, interest, uh, this is where our interest uh, is in. Uh, and what we are looking for is basically to look for, the, to look for this uh, latent hierarchical structure through the reuse of uh, previously constructed strings. Now, the origin of hierarchy in the sequential data uh, turns out to be of uh, twofold. Uh, the first uh, is that the hierarchy is there uh, by design uh, so that in a synthetic process like uh, DNA synthesis, it achieves some goal for us. For example, in DNA synthesis, it, uh, uh, it has some cost saving for us uh, for the concatenation of DNA strings. Uh, the second origin is uh, basically through the natural emergence of a hierarchy from an evolutionary process. Uh, for example, in natural language, we see stems forming up the words, then phrases, then sentences, and uh, all the way up to the full text. Or uh, in protein sequences, uh, we first have the DNA bases that get combined and form amino acids and then protein domains, motifs, and uh, different protein structures. Um, now let's see how, what our model is and how it works. Uh, so Lexis, which is uh, the name of our framework, uh, means word in Greek, and is basically a framework for uh, inferring a minimum cost uh, hierarchical representation from a given set of target strings. Uh, so this is hierarchical representation, uh, we call it Lexis DAG, and uh, because it will have a, the form of a directly acyclic graph, and we look at it vertically. Uh, so at the top level, there are the strings that are basically uh, uh, our input to our system, and uh, we have the alphabet as the source or the sources in the bottom level. Um, each node in the DAG will represent a string and the edges uh, along with, uh, are basically are accompanied uh, along with an index that show uh, the replacement of the, uh, the string in the, in the node in the higher superstring. Uh, now, this hierarchy is not any hierarchy. We are looking, uh, we are basically constraining to be of a minimum cost. Uh, now, uh, the optimization problem that we are trying to solve is basic, can be basically written as, uh, in this form. Uh, now, the choice of cost function is uh, application specific. Uh, we basically uh, only analyze two simple uh, cost functions. The first is edge cost. So the final hierarchy, hierarchy that we infer by solving this optimization, pro optimization problem will have the uh, minimum number of edges. Uh, this makes sense in applications uh, like compression because the edges are showing the replacement of substrings. Uh, the second one is the number of concatenations, uh, and this also makes sense, for example, in the application of DNA synthesis, when, where we are looking for the minimum number of concatenations. Uh, now, as the first result, and the bad news is that the optimization of both of these cost functions turn out to be NP-hard uh, through a reduction from the smallest grammar problem. Uh, so we turn ourselves to uh, basically heuristics to solve these problems. Now let's see how, we, how our heuristic works for DAG inference. Uh, so the main idea is that we follow a, uh, an iterative uh, greedy approach. And uh, in each iteration, uh, the, we select the substring that uh, basically uh, leads to the maximum uh, reduction in the cost function. 
uh, when uh, basically that substring is added as a new node to the DAG and of course the edges are rewired. Now uh, let's go through an example and see how our uh, algorithm works. So we're considering edge cost. Uh, so in the beginning we have a trivial DAG that uh, there are no intermediate nodes and we're only replacing the uh, alphabet characters. Uh, so this is basically the worst uh, value of the cost function, uh, which is the most number of edges. Uh, now, um, we are looking to replace a repeat, basically, um, in each iteration. Uh, so for example, in this stage, we have basically two choices for uh, replacing uh, the repeat and adding it as a node to the graph. So for example, the repeat AAB requires nine edges uh, in, in this initial state. Uh, it repeats three times, and if we replace it as a node, it will save three edges. The other repeat is AABC, uh, which requires eight edges, but it is only repeated two times, and uh, in the end, it will uh, save two edges for us. So uh, according to our greedy choice, we will uh, choose AAB for replacement. So when it is replaced, uh, we basically create a node for it and rewire the edges, and of course, uh, fix up the uh, indices of the edges so that the replacements are uh, consistent. Um, and as you can see here, we have, uh, we have here nine edges, and uh, when, when, it, when the node is replaced, we end up with six edges, which is the, cost, which is the reduction of uh, three edges. Uh, let's go a further step in our algorithm. So from now on, um, in order to uh, basically, uh, uh, in order to uh, 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 go further with the optimization, we can look at the uh, AAB substring that is uh, now added as a repeat as a new symbol uh, and basically extend our alphabet. And then use this symbol uh, in the process of uh, detecting the repeats. So for example, in the next stage, uh, we do end up uh, detecting such repeat uh, with the new symbol. And this helps us uh, to further optimize the cost function. And this is basically the final hierarchy that we end up with. Uh, this, shapes the, this shapes up the, uh, a general idea of the algorithm. Of course, uh, this does not end here. Uh, we do provide a, an efficient implementation. Uh, so, uh, the in, so only the intuition is that uh, the maximizers of the greedy choice uh, turn out to be only the maximal repeats. So all we have to do is to uh, look for the maximal repeats in, the, uh, in an efficient manner uh, that we use the suffix tree data structure for. Um, and the overall complexity is quadratic in terms of the uh, total length of the target strings. Um, now let's see how we can apply uh, this optimized DAGs uh, in, the, in the real world. So going back to the uh, application of DNA synthesis, so uh, here the goal is that uh, we have a set of target DNA sequences and uh, that are basically defined in a set of DNA bases. And uh, we are basically looking for to uh, looking for uh, concatenating these DNA sequences in an efficient manner because the, uh, the concatenation process involves a chemical uh, reaction and this is considered to be costly. Uh, so it makes sense to uh, reuse the previously built DNA parts uh, in order to achieve this more efficiently. Uh, this is, by the way, the case that uh, the hierarchy, uh, we design a hierarchy uh, so that uh, we achieve some goal, for example, uh, cost reduction. So we use a data set uh, that is called iGEM. Uh, we, ca we got this data set from the iGEM competition, which is an annual competition for synthetic biology and genome engineering. Uh, we use the subset of devices uh, for, for this experiment. Uh, what we are looking at is basically uh, to see how much cost reduction we have when we use uh, our algorithm uh, compared to the, the naive case of uh, just concatenating uh, the DNA bases. Uh, so what we see is basically uh, we have um, around 50% of cost reduction, uh, which is significant. Um, so as the next application, uh, here uh, we are not looking into uh, generating or synthesizing a sequence, uh, but uh, storing a sequence. Uh, Alexis, um, I mean, Alexis that can be in fact used to uh, store the sequence uh, in a hierarchical way. So we were motivated by the uh, recent, work, recent work in, uh, in the sequence uh, mining uh, that show that uh, uh, there's a very interesting uh, connection between pattern mining and sequence compressibility. Uh, so uh, 
so this works basically suggests that uh, you basically follow the MDL principle for, uh, for, for basically storing the sequence. And uh, so this way suggests that uh, we store a dictionary along with the encoding of the data and store this instead of the data. Uh, and the point is that uh, storing all of this has to cost less than uh, the original data. Uh, so this picture is basically showing uh, how we can convert a Lexis tag uh, to a linear representation so that we can store it in a, uh, in a symbolic form. And um, so the whole idea is basically uh, we store a dictionary in a, uh, in a recursive way. And the final cost will be, um, uh, will be proportional to the number of edges that we have in the, in the Lexis stack. And as we compare the method to uh, this hierarchical way of storing the sequences to the non-hierarchical ones, we end up with 2 to 20% better compression ratio. Uh, I'll go through the details of other methods that uh, you can look them up in the paper. Uh, so uh, now we we'll go to the uh, next section. Uh, now that we have uh, developed an algorithm and s saw the applications mm -hmm. of uh, uh, Lexis tags, uh, let's see how we can use them to uh, extract information from the original sequential data. Uh, so. Uh, of course, not all applications have to do with uh, storing the sequence, uh, storing the sequence, or basically generating the sequence. We are basically uh, here looking for uh, uh, making sense of the Lexis tags when we want to look at them. Uh, especially, uh, this uh, is reasonable because when you are uh, analyzing a, a large a large sequence with the Lexis tags, these tags can basically uh, become very large and. Uh, so uh, we are looking for a way to summarize uh, these Lexis tags and uh, uh, extract the representative parts of the DAG. Um, before doing so, uh, we define a metric for measuring the importance of a node within the DAG. Uh, so we, uh, the intuition is that uh, the paths in the Lexis tag from an alphabet entry or a source entry to the target nodes represent a dependency chain meaning that the target is dependent on all of the nodes uh, within the path uh, from, uh, from a certain uh, alphabet. Uh, this leads us to the definition of path centrality, uh, which uh, we define as a number of dependency chains uh, in a DAG that uh, traverse an, a, speci a specific node. This is the definition of path centrality for a node, but of course we are interested in uh, extracting a set of uh, such important nodes. So we generalize the definition of the path centrality to the sets. And uh, basically, uh, the definition for the sets will be the number of de the dependency chains in a DAG that traverse at least one node within a set. Um, now, um, we know how to rank the nodes. Uh, so to summarize a so to, to summarize a Lexis DAG, or to basically extract the core of the Lexis DAG, we define an optimization problem that we call core identification. And the whole idea is to basically infer uh, a set K of minimal cardinality uh, so that it uh, covers uh, at least a 1 minus tau fraction of source to target paths. So this is a free parameter. Of course, we, uh, if you set it uh, too low, we will basically cover all uh, the paths. Or uh, we can relax, it by, uh, relax this constraint by uh, setting larger values. In order to solve this optimization problem, again, we uh, propose a greedy algorithm for it uh, that we uh, sort the nodes based on the path centralities and uh, extract the one with the highest path centrality and then update the DAG and reiterate, basically. Uh, so the, the, we, we also have a performance guarantee for this, app, uh, for this greedy algorithm uh, because you can write the, uh, uh, the objective function in, a, in, a, in an alternative form and uh, show that the problem would be a submodular maximization problem. Uh, now, uh, since the core is consisting of uh, a set of non-redundant nodes, uh, we uh, try to apply this uh, concept of core in terms of the feature extraction application. So in a feature extraction task, we basically want to construct a set of features which are discriminative and representative. And we hypothesize that uh, building a class-specific Lexis stack for each class and extracting its core 
is a promising way to achieve uh, uh, better, dis uh, better discrimination. Uh, so we use a data set of four classes of NSF research award abstracts. And uh, you can look at these, some of the statistics of uh, this uh, data set here. So um, when we uh, extract the core from each class, uh, of course, the features turn out to be uh, interpretable, which is uh, something good. Uh, we also apply it in a, in a classification task. Uh, so the, res uh, the results for our method is uh, the second line. Uh, we offer uh, a similar uh, accuracy to classic n-grams, n-gram methods, uh, but we also offer uh, a, lot num a lot less number of features uh, compared to other n-gram approaches, which is always favorable in, a, in any learning task. Uh, now, as the last application, uh, we use Lexis uh, when we uh, want to reveal if the given data have, a, have an inherent hierarchical structure especially for the case that we don't know where the sequence, uh, what is the uh, process that is creating the sequence. Um, so for example, in protein sequences, uh, there's a lot of evidence that uh, there are a set of sequences which are conserved and reused. Uh, but the, what we ask is that, do these repeated sequences have a hierarchical structure or not? Uh, so we use the protein of uh, Baker's yeast uh, for this task. And it is important to make sure that uh, what we are basically uh, revealing with LexisTag is not spurious or noise. Uh, so we devise a statistical st a significance test uh, to help us focus on uh, the intermediate uh, nodes that are unlikely to occur, for example, in randomized data. So I don't go into the details of hypothesis test. Uh, the whole idea is to basically see how often a node in a, in a, in a LexisTag uh, happens uh, in, the, in the randomized data. Of course, the less it happens, the more surprising it is. So this figure is showing the filtering process that we go through. This is the original data, and this is the filtered data. Um, so we will end up with the sub tag of the original data. Uh, what is interesting in this data is that uh, although the filtering process does not look at the hierarchical relation between the sequences, but all of these significant uh, sequences turn out to be uh, in a hierarchy, which is pretty connected. Uh, and which is not trivial. And there are several long paths uh, that we can see uh, in this hierarchy. So this is an evidence to, to show that uh, perhaps the, uh, the protein data can have a hierarchical organization. Uh, so I will directly go to uh, the future work. Of course, uh, first of a summary, first a summary, we basically formulated a, a simple uh, optimization framework for discovering the hierarchical structure within the sequences. We showed, uh, uh, the theoretical uh, aspects of the problem and then develop some algorithm for uh, inference of the hierarchies and analyzing these hierarchies. And of course, we uh, exemplified four applications. So for the future work, uh, more, uh, more efficient optimization algorithms are always favorable or whether they exist or not. Uh, more general patterns like gap repeats or noisy repeats or context also interesting. This is what we have already worked on and is going to be presented at International Conference in Grammatical Inference. Uh, incremental scenarios when the data is fed in batches or a stream manner um, also, are also interesting. Uh, emerging topological properties of Lexis stacks, uh, for example, uh, uh, for example, at the hourglass structure is what we are very interested in. And of course, the application of specific uh, studies like uh, hierarchical structure of genome and fuzzy extensions of uh, our framework. Thank you. Thank you for the talk. Uh, you mentioned that the features are interpretable. Can you please give some examples? Yeah. So uh, this is very qualitative. This is nothing uh, uh, like objective. Uh, so, uh, for example, with the classes that we, are, we have, uh, with the data set that we analyze, for example, the first class is showing uh, the, the research proposals about uh, the knowledge management and cognitive sciences. So we see, uh, for example, engrams like machine learning, knowledge bases, natural language, artificial intelligence, neural network. Uh, and the same happens for the other classes, which the terms, the, the, the engrams, are basically uh, seem to be related to the topic that uh, the class is about. Any other questions? 
So I had one. Um, you talked about the concatenation cost, and you mm -hmm. said that every time you merge two substrings, the cost is one. Um, so it does. Can you like clarify whether it does depend on the depth of the substrings from which they are coming in the hierarchy or not? Uh, so in, in the experiment that we have uh, uh, that we have uh, basically uh, conducted, it doesn't matter wh wh what the depth is. Uh, so the cost is always one. That's because uh, in the ISIM, uh, basically, a standard, uh, this concatenation of basically standardized parts are uh, basically the concatenation, the cost of concatenation is always the same, uh, regardless of what basic parts you are concatenating, because the data set is standardized. Uh, impressive talk. Um, I think one of the, uh, of, of the uh, application is to find the hierarchy of the um, discovery. And is it possible to find the semantic, uh, latent semantic of sentences, I mean, in the NLP field? Yeah, you're mentioning unsupervised parsing, yes? Some, an application like unsupervised parsing that you're uh, interested in uh, inference of the grammar uh, of the natural text. So, uh, so this method, is that, so this kind of framework that we're basically looking for continuous repeats, is shown to be not that much, uh, not that uh, favorable in terms of the accuracy and like the measures that we have for unsupervised parsing. But the future work that we have, uh, and we basically consider more general patterns, like for example contextual patterns, uh, along with the distributional hypothesis. Uh, in that work, we show that uh, such framework can be useful in the application you're talking about. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, let's thank the speaker.